Let's talk about the markets in three minutes and start with the UK. Uh, Deutsche Bank making waves earlier this week with that note talking about the possibility that we get a balance of payments shock, the kindness of stranger being call, uh, strangers being called into question. Lizzie was referencing the rising guilt yields yesterday. We saw a real steepening in the curves, didn't we? As if there's a bit of comfort around bringing the inflation rate down in the short end, but at the longer end, concerns around debt levels. Yeah, I think so. And actually, I know I'm going to risk here being slightly contrarian. I know that's very unlike me. But I actually wonder whether the negativity around the pound specifically might be a little bit ahead of itself. And it's not that I'm suddenly turning bear bullish, sorry, I should say, on the UK or the pound. I think structurally, the UK has got immense problems for the year ahead. And it's going to be a very, very bleak year ahead. But I just think short term, we've been very, very focused on sterling negatives, UK negatives. The fact is, is that we've priced in all the trust negativity. We've we can't really be surprised negativity. And yet we're now getting some positive leadership in terms of some fiscal plans. Yes, that creates a, a budget worry, but those worries were already there. And the fact is, sterling will start getting some rate support. It's very, very rare in, in developed market world for rates and currency to diverge sustainably for a really, really long period. And we've already seen a large level of that. So unless you think mm. the UK is absolutely in crisis mode already, which I know is what some people are proposing, then I think we might get a bit of a short-term uh, positivity for sterling might get a bounce that might last a few weeks. I do not think this okay. is a turning point. I do not think this is a bottoming for the pound, but just a short-term bounce. OK, interesting. I mean, today the pound a little weaker, but uh, we take your thoughts on board over a different time horizon. The dollar then dominant, up by three-tenths of one percent, as you rightly pointed out when we looked at the GMM mark. Dollar strength, yen weakness, and we are getting some pushback from Japan, but is it meaningful? No, I think I think this, the verbal intervention is going to be completely irrelevant because the fundamentals for yen weakness and the fundamentals for dollar strength to all of these currencies remain very strong, but particularly for yen weakness. So I, I don't think um, verbal intervention will make any impact at all. I think even if they do unilateral uh, intervention, it'll only have a brief impact. It might have a brief and powerful impact, but it'll soon be eroded. And I think that the, the MOF, the Ministry of Finance in Japan, know this, so I think they'll be going to be reluctant to intervene unilaterally. I think they're hoping at some point that everyone complains enough that they get some coordinated intervention. But overall, the reasons for dollar strength are still valid for now. Yes, it's kind of stretched against uh, long-term fundamentals, but there's no reason for a turnaround yet. And I should emphasize that while I think there might be a bit of a change of narrative in the pound, it's not necessarily against the dollar. I think it's more in the crosses for that positivity on the pound. Okay. And the fight against the strong dollar continues in China as well. What's the latest there? We pull your thoughts together on China and what they're doing on currency, Mark. I was just so shocked by by how weak the data was this morning. It really was a surprise uh, in terms of kind of weakness, and I think that puts more stress on the currency. I think the message here is the PBOC is willing to let the currency uh, weaken against the dollar because the dollar is so strong, um, but they just don't want to lose control of it. And but there's another perspective here: the yuan has stayed pretty steady since the start of August against its trade weighted basket. So basically, what's happening is normally the yuan has been an outperformer up until August against most other currencies. We just get blocked blinded by dollar yuan in a world where dollar is strengthening so much. So the yuan was doing pretty well. Now it's been steady since August. And they're basically saying, look, we're willing to let the yuan weaken in line with everything else, but not necessarily quicker, but we don't want it outperforming any longer.